Thanks, Seamus. Uh, <clears throat> just titled a short presentation today, Saving Money, Creating Jobs, because <clears throat> I suppose that's where we started out in Drumban Upper Church. Um, there's not a, a, a hidden group of, of, of greenies there uh, in the hills of Tipperary. Um, <clears throat> But what is there is a very committed group of community people. And I suppose their original uh, aim in setting out on this journey was, was there some way that they could stimulate activity in their community and maybe create some employment, save some money. And that's where the journey started. So <clears throat> just to give you a sense of the location there, if you can <coughs> see that where, where those two roads are joining there, that, that's, that's Thurlis, so it's just outside Thurlis, a pretty central location, but quite uh, rural and up, very upland. Um, the, it's the parish of Drumban and Upper Church. Uh, Upper Church would be pretty well known in certain circles as on, on the, for its walking trails, uh, would have got some, um, a lot of national notice. <coughs> but Drumban would be sort of a very underdeveloped, underdeveloped uh, side of the village. I'm sure anybody even from that part of the parish wouldn't object uh, to me saying that. And I suppose that was part of the reason why uh, we went there or we had an interest in going there, <coughs> maybe to see if that imbalance could be addressed. <coughs> uh, so uh, this really goes back to a couple of individuals who approached us. At the time we were doing some talks around the county about the Rural Development Programme and the Rural Development Funding. And we were asked, could we go to this, uh, this village group, small village group, and give a presentation uh, maybe on, on the funding and maybe discuss some development opportunities that might be there. So, <coughs> um, w when we did that, um, a variety of ideas uh, came forward through the people who were there that, that evening in the community centre. Um, some wanted to look at um, a, a, a new village plan. Um, there was an, a vague idea for an energy project. Um, another person was suggesting that there was, would be great uh, possibilities and maybe a ski slope, uh, which may yet happen. <coughs> and there was also an interest in, in local tourism. And I suppose it was the first of these two that we decided to focus on. And I suppose at that stage then we, you know, the, the, the ideas at the time were, were everything from uh, the, the wind turbines to um, forestry, things that uh, John would have mentioned there. And we, we call, at this stage we called in the local energy agency who were good enough to, and they have been involved right through the project. But they gave great advice very early on. Um, <coughs> And this goes back now, so this project has been developing over the last two years. Uh, but on, I suppose through their advice on this evening, it really shifted the focus of, of the members of the community. Uh, and it, it was decided, okay, let's, let's start this journey at the beginning. I mean, uh, let's save energy before we, we start generating it. <coughs> um, <coughs> I suppose, uh, Community action, uh, it's, it's, there, there are a number of community groups around the country who are involved in um, community energy projects. There's been a, 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 an interesting uh, overview there given recently by um, <coughs> somebody from the Department of Environment. Uh, it's available online if you type in community energy projects in Ireland. But I suppose the it's still quite small, like community groups as drivers. and, and we are hoping that we're going to show with this project that community groups can be drivers of the local economy, of the local green economy, <coughs> with a bit of support from, from the agencies. So this here is um, our energy team in, in Drumban, members of the local community. And <coughs> actually in this, in this uh, photograph, they're holding up the GPS equipment uh, which was used in a survey of the local community. After we decided to focus on energy, 
and energy reduction. Uh, the next step that we decided uh, to take was to do a survey to map uh, energy use and demand in the local community. So there was obviously uh, the need to find out what was the use, what was the demand, but there was also the, the need, I suppose, to prove to ourselves, to prove to the local community that there was a viable project here. As I said, people didn't start out with, with the green agenda in Drumban Upper Church. Um, <clears throat> so there was a need really to put that information together and for people to look at it. Um, <clears throat> so here we have a, a local group and they're setting out on that journey. Uh, there's, uh, they're holding up the GPS equipment. They're about to go out and survey their community and survey all of the 450 households in, in the parish. We were fortunate enough at that stage to have the local uh, col uh, college on board um, at the time to his Tipperary Institute, uh, now LIT Tipperary. So we had uh, the, um, <coughs> the uh, Environmental Resource Management uh, Department come on board there and we had a student from that department come and over a summer do her placement with us, which was around um, processing the data that the local volunteers collected. We also faced a problem at that time, <clears throat> and what's interesting is, is how um, the, the problem in how, how do we go and survey a community. I mean, we hadn't done that before, none of the volunteers had before. How do we divide up the community? And it was interesting that it was, the answer was provided by the uh, local GA club, and one of the members arrived in the hall with a ready-made map of the community broken down into 10, uh, <coughs> ten areas um, that they would use for their fundraising activities. So just to flick through anyway, um, I suppose the, the thing here is that there was a huge in input from the local volunteers in terms of the surveying. Um, and that, in, that local involvement contributed also to the high response rate. It was local people calling to their doors um, it was a community initiative and people were generally very positive to it. <coughs> I suppose the survey report itself, uh, then we, we had a launch um, in the community in October of last year. It was launched by the head at the time, uh, Professor Owen Lewis of SCAI, uh, who is pictured here. <coughs> and I suppose that brought out some, some, some data for the community um, and allowed us to see that, okay, a small parish of a, of a thousand people, 450 householders, is spending a million euro on its energy. And that excludes transport, because we were only looking at household energy use. If a parish could save even 20, 25% of that, that would represent a, a huge investment into the community. So I suppose that really, that was pretty stark and that, that, that pointed out to people that there was a viable project here. <laughs> um, so just flicking forward, the, we're, we're faced with, once we had, we, the community was on board and at that stage to, to really get behind this initiative. And then we were faced with um, the next stage which, of it, which was how do we go about putting together uh, an energy efficiency project here. And our, what, we, what the plan was, was to put together a cluster, an initial cluster of interested homes and to see could we go and get that work done and that there would be efficiencies there by clustering a group together that the work, if it was put out to tender, it would cost so much less per household. <coughs> we were also looking at that point that uh, we found uh, a local energy officer who came on board uh, with uh, the organisation I work with, North Tipperary Leader, uh, as, on, as part of the Job Bridge scheme. And Marcella, who's an um, architectural technician and BR assessor, brought ma huge technical knowledge to the project over a number of months uh, up till current times. So I suppose the the initial research phase has been followed by this um, implementation phase where we've set up the local energy office, tried to link in with the initial cluster of households. Um, BR assessments carried out on that initial cluster to try to scope what work is involved. 
Um, there's been, the work has also been put out to tender to local contractors and obviously then the big question is funding. Can, can we get the agencies, other agencies, national agencies behind us, um, SEAI, um, <coughs> We were lucky at the time, then over the course of the summer, that ACI launched its area-based pilot scheme, uh, which we have uh, applied for, and we've just heard good news on uh, in the last number of days. So I suppose um, a lot of this is, there's been a lot of partners around uh, making this project happen, whether it's the initial contact made by the community group, the voluntary hours put in by the community, uh, community people. We calculated that for uh, the survey alone, uh, up until the, sur the survey report, there was the equivalent of a full-time person for uh, working eight months. Um, <clears throat> in terms of, if you calculated the voluntary hours put in by the people in the community, it was the equivalent of a full-time worker for eight months. So that's one resource. There's the time resources. But there's also the fin trying to leverage financial resources. Then, and we have that now coming through from a local sheltered housing group and obviously the householders themselves who will contribute depending on whether they would be uh, low income or, or private householders. Um, further phases we could envisage um, subsequent clusters to the initial 30. Ho hopefully those, the initial 30 will provide um, a, a sort of an impetus to the rest of the community once they see it happen. Um, you'll always have the people, I suppose, sitting on the fence waiting to see whether this is going to actually work or totally fall flat on its face. Um, and then, as I said, we started this process really um, f with, with an ob a community development objective which has come to have a focus on energy. Um, there may be the possibility of broadening that horizon, um, looking more broadly at maybe an energy independent community, uh, whether we could link with other communities uh, in Ireland and abroad. Um, we did um, earlier on this year uh, make a visit um, well, we, we went halfway to Port Leash and we met the two representatives from Ballinagran who have a slightly different take on this, but there are some points of uh, <coughs> similarity. I suppose um, SEAI uh, have made great um, noise uh, or, you know, tried to put, put forward this idea of a project path that, you know, there's community energy projects can fall into certain phases, whether it's, um, you know, getting the people together, identifying the project, putting a plan together. And I suppose we've, we can recognise that now, looking back, that there are these phases to it, although I suppose for, in a sense for Drumban, commitment is, is something that has arrived um, at different stages and there's been different levels of commitment from the community as well. Um, but I, I think it probably is good to try to map out the different stages of that although there's not a sort of a one-size-fits-all for any of these initiatives. Um, so that's it. I suppose just, just the last thing is here. We, we have um, Marce our energy officer is here with us today, and um, she is now working on uh, linking in with the, with the individual households. And, you know, um, <coughs> that, that is, is a task in itself. So maybe, maybe in the discussion um, afterwards, Maybe Marcella, you might be able to share with us some of that. Uh, you know, the, the trying to trying to actually scope this work, um, trying to get financial commitment from from individual householders as well. Uh, so, we look forward to that discussion. Thanks. <coughs>